All right, so welcome everybody. Um, this is our teaching and learning call for Wednesday, June 1st. Um, wow, I can't believe it's June already. Uh, I know I say that every year, the, the time seems to move quicker, but it really does. So um, we don't have like a, a particular topic scheduled for today. Um, so we're just going to be looking at JIRAs. Um, but uh, before we get started, let me just remind you again, um, Open Aperio registration is still open. So if you've not yet registered, I encourage you to do so. And SakaiCon registration is also open. Um, so uh, for, for both of those events, um, I, I encourage you guys to sign up. The um, Open Aperio is gonna be completely online this year. And SakaiCon, the, the program, the sessions will all be online, but there will also be a watch party in Ann Arbor. So um, if you would like to meet up with folks in person, um, Dr. Chuck is hosting a watch party there um, at the University of Michigan to watch the sessions together in a room on campus. And then also he's planning a few after hours activities and excursions and things. And I think actually he's doing a watch party also uh, at his lake house for Open Aperio if anybody wanted to, to attend that. Um, but I think that one's a little less formal because um, we haven't been advertising it as long and it's sooner. So <laughs> people probably can't don't have as much time to make travel arrangements. Um, yeah, Open Aperio is a shorter event this year. It's only like really one day in the hackathon, I think. So right. we're not really uh... All right, well let's talk. It's um yeah, it's it's but it's a uh, um I think there's a whoever's probably it's probably whoever's local can come, but and other people can, but I think he's only got he's got two rooms. Otherwise you need to rent a car to get probably to the lake house because it's not gonna be as arranged and it's not gonna be like um Sakai Khan. Sakai Khan will be at the U of M campus, and it's a little, it's quite a bit more planned than um, open up here will be. It's kind of, as you say, informal, whoever wants to come and watch it. Yeah, thanks, Matt. My dogs mm -hmm. are going crazy barking at all times. So I'm glad you were able to give us some more details about um, the lake house uh, yep. gathering. If anyone has any questions, they can email me or Dr. Chuck about that. Or wants to come to either event, of course. Great. Um, does anybody have any other announcements before we move on? Um, let's go ahead and take a look at or JIRA filter, unless somebody has a particular JIRA that they would like to bring forward. I didn't see any that were sort of requested. So um, share my screen here. So, so I don't know how much has been mentioned, but the Aperio Awards, um, I think they ended today, but they might have been extended. Um, oh, that's true. Yeah, the um, there's a, a, the Aperio Fellows, and there's a couple different new awards as well. So if you haven't seen that email, um, you want to check your... Yeah, there is a Teaching and Learning Awards. It's different than it was in the past. You can be nominated and win again. Um, right. They extended it. it. Looks, I think it was due today, but they extended it till next Tuesday. So, um, make sure to nominate people that you think are deserving of these awards in the community. Yeah, definitely. And and mm -hmm. people who have won in the past are eligible as long as they haven't received an award in the last three years. That's right. So that's an important um, thing to remember because there's lots of people that. You'd think, oh, well, I can't nominate so-and-so because they already got it. But that's not true anymore. They changed it. And um, it's also the award um, nomination form is much more streamlined, especially for the teaching and learning one. 
that one used to be endless. <laughs> so um, we we pared it down considerably. It's much, much easier to nominate uh, folks now. So um, if you haven't already taken a look at that, please do. I'll see if I can find the link to it and put it in the etherpad. I put it in the etherpad but... already. Oh, great. Thank you. I'm not seeing it. Oh, because I'm not looking at etherpad. That's why. see it there either. Is everybody in the same etherpad? I'm in the one that was in the link that uh, Didi posted. Oh, okay. Looks like we got two different ones. So. Are there is she, is she different than the one you posted? Yeah, I put a zero in front of. Oh, the... yeah, I, I went. I didn't do the zero one either. Pat. Yeah, I'll I'll go to this one, the one that everybody's actually in. So. Okay. Let me sign in. Uh. Okay, so we have a couple of jurors here that people have. Oh, um, let's go to this first one. Okay. So this is a uh, group submission displays inactive user when group member submits. So if a site has groups and it was group submissions, the inactive student is still listed in the assignment as being part of the group. Um, so in the comments here, it's saying that uh, maybe you want to leave the inactive student in there labeled as inactive. Um, what do others think? Inactive students typically aren't shown in other places. So like grade book and list of students and submissions, they usually disappear from all those places. So this would be a little bit of an anomaly in the, the UI. Um, what do you guys think? Do you ever make people inactive um, that you think you're going to reactivate? Is it a common situation? Yeah, my question was why were they inactive? Like our students, if they drop, they actually get removed. So I don't know if that's different in other schools. Yeah, that would be my question because a lot of times with the add drop, they're actually removed. Anybody have any thoughts? I know Christina had some comments on the JIRA. Did you want to elaborate on that a little bit, Christina? On the managed participants, yeah, you can either remove a, you know, check the box and remove a person, or you can change their status to inactive. Um, I don't know how many people use either. I think it's like it's it seems like it's fine to me if it displays it. It just should indicate maybe that they're not, so that the instructor can like take you know cl clean them up in the group or something if possible. But I don't know what would happen like if like if you had like a student submit an assignment and then they became inactive. Should they? It feels like they should still be part of the group that submitted. Otherwise. It would be kind of confusing if if they were you know you're active for half the term and then you became inactive for some reason yeah i mean i could see leaving that label as long as it doesn't mess anything else up anywhere else um, uh, i don't know what it it, it would be nice if there's like a screenshot here to like see what what um what what it looks like when they submit is there any is there attachment there let's see one. Oh wait yeah sorry okay yeah so it's it's got the team members um for the group 
but it doesn't like indicate at all that they're inactive. It just, it yeah. looks like any other um, person. I think I would like probably somehow indicate they're inactive, but I don't know how you'd, in a UX way, you'd indicate that with just a label or with a, you know, you grade them out or something like that. To show that they are, are not. But uh, yeah, I think it would be a, a problem for, um, to, you know, because if they, they they could have had actually uh, you know, contributed to this group in the past and became an active in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the idea of having them grayed out, but I think they probably need the label also, just so people yeah. know why the user is grayed out. Yeah, for accessibility too. So any other opinions on, on that one? I don't know how common it is. That would be my opinion. Oh, what did right, Sean so say? I'll, does he have a comment? He just says, yeah. can we talk about it? Oh, OK. Um, he didn't actually so, give, you, give us the answer. No. <laughs> So, um, so I, I'll put a comment on here that uh, I think it should stay, but be grayed out and labeled as inactive. That's what Christina said too down there about being labeled as inactive. I'll just make a note here. I guess I could also click on the JIRA rather than waiting for you to scroll down there, but. More exciting, it's like a suspense. <laughs> <laughs> what else does this Jira hold? <clears throat> well, like one of those, uh, those, those, those mystery games you play and you have to keep revealing the clues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what could possibly be at the bottom of the screen? All right, so um, our next Jira um, is from Jennifer. So this is a SAMAGO assessment due date and timer and show submitted date past due date. Jennifer, since you're here, do you want to talk us through this one a little bit? Yeah, we've actually had this happen twice in the last few weeks. So what happens is the instructor sets the test to expire, let's say 11.55 p.m., and the student logs in at 11.30 to take a test that's an hour and a half. And so when they log in at 11.30, they get, they get cut off at 11.55, like they can't finish the test. But the timer keeps going for the whole hour and a half. So it appears to the instructor that they were in there from 11.30 to 1 a.m. instead of they don't really know if they actually finish the test. So we did, um, Derek and I did a couple tests and it does kick them out, but because they didn't hit submit, um, the timer just keeps going. So it kind of shows that they were in there for the whole time, but they really weren't. So I don't know if that's maybe the timer needs to be better synced up that if the due date hits first, the timer stops. But it does. It appears that they were the, in for the whole time, and they weren't in the test the whole time. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, I think I understand what you're saying. I I think um, maybe if the timer stops when the when the end date is, that might be a good way to indicate if it it stopped automatically when the or if it auto submits at that 11:55 or whatever the end time is instead of the timer yeah keeping going but yeah. i don't know if anybody else has seen that do we know what it looks like to the student they they get kicked out you said yeah they get kicked out so they haven't hit submit so the timer just keeps going and, and submits after the full time frame not the not the actual physical time <clears throat> Because we can tell by like how many questions they answer, 
Like I had a student recently, they logged in at 1143. So they only had like five, 10 minutes and they only answered like a quarter of the questions. So, you know, they got kicked out, but it doesn't say submit in their profile. And then the timer submits, you know, at like one or one thirty a.m. Yeah, that, that definitely should reflect the amount of time that they're actually in there. Um, it would be confusing from the instructor view, yeah. and you don't want to have to be going back and forth trying to figure out you know, when they logged in and how much time they had, and you know. Yeah, so if I could just auto submit at the at the time, you know, eleven fifty five or you know twelve oh one a.m. or whatever time the end time is, instead of the actual instead of keeping going length of time. Them. Do you know if auto submit was checked in these assessment cases? Um, the settings. Let me check really quick. Or if it. So I, 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 I wrote the code for auto submit. And I feel like if the auto submit process runs it, it. The logic was to set that um, the latest possible time they could submit as the submit time. It's possible if it wasn't set, then the timer, then the timer ran out. There was a separate thing that sets it. Um, yeah. Now she has late submissions. No, not after due date, but she does not have auto submit checked. Okay. So I guess we could run another test with make sure auto submit is checked. Yeah. If you if you try an auto, yeah. If you're testing it, um, you know, with auto submit checked. And you also have to run that job that does the auto submit mm -hmm. after yep. doing it manually. But um, yeah, then if that puts the correct time, then um, we then it's like it's only I guess it's only the issue if they don't have it checked, and that would be worthwhile to note in the Jira. And I think it would probably still whatever process is submitting when the timer runs out, which I don't know what that is, is going to probably need to have the same behavior and sync up to the end of the uh, the time or the last possible time they could submit. Okay. Yeah, I can mm -hmm. consciously test one and make sure that's checked. Yeah. I don't I'm not sure if I did and I did the last time, but but this particular one I just got over the weekend, um she did not have the auto submit checked. Okay. And the auto submit, yeah, usually when long site or somebody runs it, they don't schedule it to run, you know, all the time, just like a couple times a day, but it still should know catch all the ones and clean up the the times and stuff when that process runs and but if it's not checked i don't think anything happens to it other than the normal um normal processing which i guess if it was timed it should um it should submit their work when the timer runs out and probably would be you know the timer might go past the end of the exam and because it did submit it it just submitted yeah. it yeah. after the end time that's what confused the instructor mm -hmm. uh, it might not be anything with the auto submit it just might be with the timer and yeah it doesn't make sense that you could have the timer running past the due date we should sync it up or well past the late submission deadline i guess so I guess if they had a late submission deadline, they could run it past the due date, too. Well, would the student get kicked out then? Um, no, yeah. they, they, yeah. they shouldn't get kicked out. I don't have to check both those times. If the student, like, you know, just stopped doing it, like, close the screen and kick themselves out, then it could be past the due date, but not past the, you know, the late submission deadline. But. It sounds like this um, should look into this and make sure that the timer actually ends when the due date happens. Um, if it's the final due date, not the ended or whatever, whatever the, the final time that a student should submit, that's when yeah. the timer should stop running. Yeah, it says in the description, the, uh, the Students will have until the end of the time limit or until the final submission deadline, whichever comes first to submit their work. The answers will be automatically saved and submitted at the expiration of the timer. 
mm. so in the notes so it sounds like it sounds like the timer you know stuff isn't submitted until the timer runs out and uh, no matter w what the deadline is but they don't allow, they don't it doesn't allow them to submit their work so that's kind of confusing if the the timer runs out you know past the final submission deadline Yeah, but auto submit should should lock them to that that final submission deadline. Ignore the timer. Yeah, like whatever comes first. If they run out of time, yeah. or if the date time stamp is first, isn't that what you're saying, Matt? Yeah, that's that's what auto submit should should do. Should but do. yeah, if you had auto submit checked, if you had, if they had auto submit checked, then it should have uh, taken care of this this issue. But if they don't have it checked. It's going to be whatever the timer, whenever the timer runs out, as you noticed here. And okay. uh, I think that's, you know, I don't, it's, I don't know if that's right or not, but that sounds like that could be, you know, clarified a little bit in the, somewhere. Yeah, I mean, it, it's good that auto submit may correct it, but it still seems like an issue if it's an option to have auto submit on or off. Yeah, you know, that is. this is a potential problem. If it's off, then it seems like it should be fixed. Timer. I think so, because obviously it's mm -hmm. confusing when the instructor looks at the um, activity log and thinks that they've submitted it at 1.30 a.m. when it ended at 11.55. Mm -hmm. It says unless you use the assessment template and make it so that auto submit can't be changed. Yeah, you can always do that. <laughs> yeah. Avoid that, the problem, but there's still kind of this lurking underlying issue that could crop up if people don't have a template. I, I think the timer should expire the same as when the students get until the, you know. Yeah, when, like when they can no longer be yeah. in the test, that's when the timer should. Yeah, you know, if time the students have until the end of the time limit or until the final submission deadline, whichever comes first, then that should be that should be the time limit. Yeah. The timer should run out then too. The timer shouldn't just keep rolling going, past right. the final submission deadline for no reason. So it's just uh, I think we could change it so the timer would stop when the final submission deadline hits. Okay. Um, yeah, is everybody agreed on that? any dissent so no i think i think that's a good plan and then i like i said we'll test a little bit more with the box checked and not make I'll sure i'll go that back and comment on it later but make sure that behavior isn't changing either I will update that later. Um, so are there any other JIRAs that people know of that they want to look at specifically, or should we just kind of browse through the um, issues in JIRA and see if one looks good? Typing again, so I'm going to. Oh, she's, she was giving instructions on where to find templates. 
All right, so let's um, let's take a look then at some of the JIRs. So these are um, JIRs that have been uh, labeled for TNL, and uh, they're either open or waiting info. So we can sort um, by component or by date if there's a particular type of JIRA that you're interested in looking at, like something related to say, assignments or um, a lot of assignments. Does anybody have a tool they want to float? We can sort them by when they were created and get the most recent ones. Was created. Oh. Definitely don't look at the oldest ones. No. <laughs> so here <laughs> is, I know I was surprised it was there. I was stunned for a moment. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, this one is really recent. Okay. So this is the one we just looked at. Um, here's the one in assignments, rename heading to attachments from submitted attachment. All right, so, um, students often confuse saving a draft with submitting after the deadline expires. Instead of only saved a draft, could um, get confused. Let's see. To the wording and understanding of the attachments, it says submitted attachments. The purpose is to suggest an improvement to the heading that currently reads submitted attachments. Let's see if you. So. view before the deadline expires. Okay, so there's the attachments. And after the and so why not pass deadline or expired? Why is due gone? Change. Heading to student attachments. Where did back to list go? Okay. Um, anybody have any thoughts on this one? His images get a little busy and have a lot of suggestions going on, but his actual course suggestion from the ticket, um, you know, changing just that where it says submitted attachments to just yeah. being you know, attachments, acknowledging the fact that it is possible that the student did not actually submit the darn thing, seems like a perfectly valid use case. I agree. Yeah. And I think his updates on the other pages of like, where did they go? It's, they're all valid. Yeah, too. those are all <laughs> other questions that I kind of got lost down the rabbit hole. Um, yeah. But yeah. He's absolutely um, right on, uh, on almost all of them. I can't see a difference. That one's beautiful, though. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, this just says attachment. So it probably should, just for consistency, say student attachments on both. Places, right? That would make sense. Just because it's a little odd that it all of a sudden changes. Yes. So, but yeah, yeah. that. Calling it student attachments also makes it clear the difference between those attachments and the attachments that would be under the additional resources for assignment, where it says no attachments yet. Right. 
area here. Is that, is that on the previous screen? Yeah. So yeah, I would make that clear. Okay. So um, let's see. I'm still in. Okay. So this one, did you paste paste that into the Etherpad? Maybe. Sure. One sec. Got it. All right, so question two, change to student. That's it's good. Change. Uh, is that state? Is that? Deadline and after deadline. I just want to make sure. Oh. Is this, see, is that right? Whoops. Um, yeah, that's right. Okay. Cool. I'll, I'll label that one also after the call. So let's see what else we've got to look at. Here's one about resources. So you can, we can go down this. Um, other thing I've thought about doing is you can add the columns for watchers and votes and sort that too and kind of see what the most interest is. Um, okay. I don't know if that's anything you typically do, but. Uh, votes and watchers, they usually like uh, line up where people that are watching it are typically the same people that are voting on it. And you can sort that column. Um, I don't know how many people vote. I try to like watch everything and vote things I like too. And I, I try to watch most issues and um, that I uh, care to get updates on and uh, vote on some issues. So some of these are like have a lot of watchers on them. And some of them have been updated recently, so like in April and 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 just today and uh, well, well that's that's a good that suggestion only, yeah thanks you want to um, find the most interesting ones in this list it's hard to go through yeah okay so here's one on tests and quizzes um updated fairly recently i'm wondering what that update was Reverted in 22, yeah. Yeah, do it. Yeah, this one um, was reverted because it caused some problems getting to like some of the other actions that you would typically do um, on a, an assessment. Export and duplicate are only available on the drafts slash working copy, so when those got removed automatically, those abilities did not get a, made available on the published copies. So yeah, those need to be available for the published before we can remove. So it got reverted mm -hmm. just to keep those uh, options available. So like the idea is that like you'd kind of hide the drafts, but you know they, you kind of would combine the action the for the drafts draft into the yeah actual I can kind of see that happen this is what they were talking about when oh, they were... yeah the idea was to only have one item in the list that you're really dealing with because what happens is that faculty see two of everything after yeah. they publish something and the instinct is to remove one of the copies because they think it's some sort of duplication and it makes your list longer and when you're looking for the right one sometimes you go to the wrong one and so it's just easier to have one thing for each assessment. Um, but since yeah. Samago was kind of built with this two copies um, you know, architecture, um, the, the 
solution here proposed is to hide the, the draft once it's published, um, which would be fine because it would still only give the user one thing to worry about in the, in the user interface, but you need to have all the functions available to you still. So it, you need a little more work. That sounds good. I mean, back in the early days, they were actually in separate tabs, so it was a little less confusing, I think, but having the one page is both good and also more confusing for this this problem. Absolutely. Um, I think that sounds like a good idea. That's not, he, he didn't do that, and that's why it got reverted. Yep. And he basically just hit it, but it didn't make all the, you know, things I work see. on the published version. Yeah, I think, you know, it's it's completely fine internally to keep how Samago works and keep the working draft, you know, hidden. But yeah, we should, we need to have those those functions kind of you know, reference against the hidden draft version of it. Yep. I don't know if that there's really anything we can comment on this particular Jira. So we're going to yeah. skip that one. Yeah. <laughs> It sounds good though to have that fixed. Yep. <laughs> I would I would vote it. <laughs> um okay, here's another one with a lot of votes. So this one lessons cannot see feedback when tests and quizzes is used. So it looks like this is open. I think I saw some discussion about this on the this one was commented today and I know it's been open for a long time. Student tries to take the assessment from lessons. They can't see the results. Um, however, they take it anonymously, can see the results. So let's see what the comments are. Um, test plan was being rewritten a little bit. Looks like there's actually a pull request that got open for this uh, last week. Yeah. So hopefully this is being fixed. Let's see what the um, screenshots. Okay. New button. Is, was there a button added? Maybe was that part of the fix? Show feedback. A, a new button that allows users to show feedback has been added to submitted student view. Okay, I guess that's this feedback? right here. The show feedback button. And then I guess that's just showing what settings are selected. Well, there's no button. And okay. Then... So when you're coming from lessons, you don't see the button. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that was fixed. Um, it looks like it's got a resolved tag on it, but they were, I guess, working with the um, test plan. So just from the comments, that was the last. Yeah, that sounds like uh, there's a pull request. It'll probably be uh, reviewed and merged uh, next week, when, hopefully when they get to it. And cool. Oh. Good to know. Um, Uh, this is a roll up Jira import from site duplicate and core site creation. You know, this one was one that Josh had mentioned wanting to kind of get people talking about a little bit to prioritize some of these. Josh isn't here today, so I'm wondering if we should save this one. We also only have about 15 minutes left. It might take longer than that. So I'm going to skip this one and keep it for another. Let me just grab the mm -hmm. here and put it in our list just so I don't forget about it. Oh, you already put it in there, Didi? You're too fast. I'm trying to what? keep up with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank Sorry about you. that. I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep up with you. <laughs> I, I was just talking about it and it magically appeared it's <laughs> amazing this voice activated <laughs> um, pad. it's a new feature yeah <laughs> all right so let's see. 
this. Another one that's good for talking about. Um, here's this one that keeps coming back up. People love to rename things. Well, this one I think really needs renaming. <laughs> but I think it needs more than just renaming. I think it needs some splitting. I know the UX group was talking about this, and I, I don't know if this was part of the Trinity work or not. I'm not sure. Get with Sean and find out. But um, part of the problem that Site Info is a bad label is that the tool has more than one audience. So it's like one thing for instructors and it's another thing for students. And there's very little actually that students can do there except for groups. Um, and, uh, but it's hard to name it so that it makes sense to both audiences. However, it also has a gazillion tabs. So it would make sense to move some of the functions out of site info and into other places so that it could be more appropriately named and maybe just geared toward one audience instead of two. So I think this one is kind of a bigger thing than just renaming the existing. Um, at least that's my take on it. That makes sense. I think originally this tool is a lot simpler. Um, yeah. And then it just, this is the dumping ground for everything mm -hmm. that people wanted to put in here. Everything that didn't have a home kind of got yeah. dumped in site info. Yeah, everything about the course type. And I mean, other LMSs just call it settings, and it's basically the same thing. They have like a gazillion tabs, and it's just settings. But mm. it, um, settings makes more sense to me, quite honest. Yeah. Info. I mean, and I've, I've never been crazy about the and in a title of a tool. Me it, it just bugs me <laughs> seeing that. I never uh, thought of that. That is true. It's stupid. <laughs> it should be a tool <laughs> name. <but> that's right. <laughs> I mean, like, and in, in like, I think in uh, Windows, they renamed their control panel to settings, and it has like everything in it from information to configuration to whatever. It's like this catch all. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of what people think of when they think of settings. I mean, in OS X, they call it preferences, but I don't think that's quite the same thing. Yeah, I think settings makes more sense yeah. in the context of a course. So we have a different area for preferences for the user, um, but this is more about the course settings. Yeah, so we could probably just call it settings and it'd probably be. Yeah, I'd be happy with settings. Yeah. But I'd also want to move out some of the stuff. The group and user stuff, I think, needs to go to a different area. I'm not sure where. There is some, there's, there's like cognitive load issues by having too many things in the left navigation mm -hmm. and you don't want to like have unnecessary um, tools I think are unnecessary links there that people don't use but I would put it in roster I think a lot of people like having roster anyway it makes it sense if, if you put it into something that already exists yeah. is that um that roster is a is a tool that is already on the list right there's again there's roster and then there's um, section info, I think, too, right? Yeah, but not everybody uses section info if they don't have more than one section. Um, yeah, so there's some stuff that's like, why is edit class roster and site info? And, and like, yeah, I, I of, mean, groups, I, I mean, does that really need to be in site info? Is that yeah. more of a people thing? I think that's so. that's a good suggestion, but it's probably separate than, than this to have this. Be settings and have you know move some stuff over to roster. Yeah. Christina is saying that roster could absorb add participants, manage participants, manage groups. Definitely, I agree yeah. with that.
I, mean, I can try to summarize that in a comment on here. I may have commented on this before, I can't remember. There's a lot of comments on this one. It's been around for a while. Yeah. But I'll put a more recent comment about what we talked about today um, on this one. Didi, can you update the etherpad with that? Or did you already? Yeah, you already did. Awesome. <laughs> I like this. I like partnering, this. partnering crime here. Partnering crime. <laughs> All right. Oops. So. Okay, here's a Samago one. Um, do we want to look at Samago? Sometimes. It's bigger than a bread box. Yes. We have 12 minutes. We can get a lot done in 12 minutes. Okay. We'll look at the same. Go. Okay. So the extended delivery exceptions has multiple usability issues. Counterintuitive, confusing, and behaves differently from other tools. So, um, yeah. Add exception date and time limit radio buttons should not be available or visible while the drop down selection. Is this something that, who's Mitchell Dunn? Was this something UVA was working on before? I think oh. this it was something that UVA was working on because Tiffany um, created the JIRA and I know that they were working on some stuff in Sam ago. Um, Yeah, I was involved in the UI. I know it was like originally contributed by Dayton and I cleaned it up a little bit and I, I never really liked it, but I can never get anyone to like kind of provide feedback on it. It's like, look at this, help me. And nobody did. And so until, you know. Uh, These are probably good suggestions in here. I don't know how long it would take to implement them or if anyone's working on that. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, some very good suggestions. Mm -hmm. Just wondering if there were any updates from. Wow, that's linked to a lot of stuff. Oh. <laughs> this has been worked on at UVA for eventual control. That was last year. Uh, so maybe we should check in with Tiffany to see if they finished it, um, if they're still working on it. And if so, you know, what's uh, the looks like likelihood I commented that we could... A long time ago about this. And yeah. Agreed that there, there were some great easy fixes that are mentioned here and some of them that may be a little more work and yeah i guess if they're not going to contribute then we should i'll have to get somebody see. on that hopefully we should definitely get a status from them and mm -hmm. see you know because if they've implemented it already at uva which they very well might have it's been a year um then uh makes it more likely that we could get the contribution if they abandoned it or they're not working on it anymore than you know out on our own yeah, i know they're still running uh, sakai there but i don't know what they're i don't know how much development they're doing at this yeah point. and they're i don't think their git was a public there were some schools like nyu that had a had all their stuff public so you could potentially pull it out but I don't think theirs was. Yeah, so um, I will, um, I'll add a comment on this one, just asking if they're still working on it. Great. Great. And then we may need to break it up into like some yeah, smaller some issues if they are. Yeah. There's a lot of them here. It's like. But, Big roll up jira almost. Yeah. Um, so I want to break it up into smaller pieces if it. Yeah, that would be easier to get it done. The pieces of it done. There's there's pieces in here I was interested in looking at, but I. I didn't. Uh, 
move any forward on it because it, they were they were working on it. Um, supposedly working on it last year. So, mm. but I don't think I could do the whole thing. I would need like some EDF helpers, long side help or something. Yeah, it'd be a lot easier if we broke it up into smaller ones. Yeah, I could definitely do some pieces of it though. Okay. Well, it looks like we've only got about five minutes left. So um, I'm going to suggest that we break here. Um, just a reminder, uh, next week, we're not meeting because of our next, not next week, our next meeting would be in two weeks. We're not meeting because of open period because it's during uh, one of the period days. So our following meeting would be a month from now, um, would be the first week of July, which is July 6th. Um, now I know that's the week of um, Independence Day. Um, hopefully you guys are, are going to be available on the 6th. Yeah. You may have a problem with that Wednesday. Just off on Monday. At the moment I'm planning on being here. Okay. And the, tw the 20th after is uh, SakaiCon, so. Yeah, so we won't be meeting that day either. Yeah. They put that on here. Um, no, this is every three weeks. Is it every three weeks? It's the first and third. Um, oh. So what? Uh, I didn't actually. I don't know if SakaiCon will be. Yeah, it is, the, it is the 20th. SakaiCon, I don't. Well, yeah, we do have two days planned. So, yeah, it does fall during the yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, so, if anybody has any suggestions for what they would like to discuss on the 6th, let me know and uh, we'll get that on the schedule. Otherwise, um, have a great rest of your week and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for coming. Thanks.